And here what I want to show you, this is the yolk sac. And remember, this is the developing embryo, maybe in the third week or fourth week. And this is the yolk sac. Now look here, rather this is fourth week. This is yolk sac. From here, the primordium germ cell. Do you see these red spots? These red spots, do you see? Yes. These red spots are the primordial germ cells which are present in the wall of yolk sac. And from here, these primordial germ cells will migrate and go to the developing gonad, which may be testes or ovary. Okay? So from here, these cells will migrate and they will go. Now, these cells which are present in the yolk sac, these cells have 46 chromosomes. How many chromosomes they have? 46. 46. They have a diploid number of chromosomes. Okay, remember Double this. Hmm? Double, Double is not single strand. Now, now you can see that these, this is the cell which is there. So how many chromosomes they have? 46. But now you can see they are single stranded. Single stranded. Yeah. Okay? This is the center of chromosome and this blue is one chromosome. This red is one chromosome. Therefore, they have such 46 chromosomes. Now, this cell, which is a maybe a primary oocyte or maybe a primary spermatocyte, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, spermatogonia or oh. ugonia, okay. and this spermatogonia or ugonia becomes primary spermatocyte oh. or oh. primary oocyte. And when it becomes primary oocyte or spermatocyte, now this cell duplicates its DNA. You can see now, the single blue becomes double blue. And the single red becomes uh, double red. Double. So the chromosomes become double. double. Or the amount of DNA becomes double. Oh, Clear? Mm -hmm. So now, 2N becomes 4N. 2N was the weight of DNA. Oh, yes. So 2N DNA becomes 4N. Or oh, we say 46 chromosome becomes 92 Two. chromosomes. Right. Is it clear? Yes. No. No. Before, ovule, before the is meio, meiosis, the number of chromosomes we have this is a cell here. Let's say, let's say we have a cell here, and this is a germ cell. Okay, we don't know it will become a sperm or ovum, but this is a germ cell. Okay? Now this germ cell has this nucleus, and in the nucleus are present 46 chromosomes, and each chromosome is like this. Single, Single chromatic. Okay? And we have 46. Okay? Now this germ cell, our becomes primary spermatocyte or oocyte. Now let's say primary spermatocyte. Now when it becomes primary spermatocyte, it's only, not duplicates, it's only increase in size. Only increase in size. So it becomes more big. And but still the Chromosomes are 46, Six. single chromatic. So what is more? Cytoplasm is more here. No. More cytoplasm. Okay? Now, this primary spermatocyte enter into first meiotic division. <coughs> so before it enter into first meiotic division, this primary spermatocyte, I will only draw nucleus now. This primary spermatocyte will duplicate the DNA. Duplicate DNA means what? Means the single chromatid now becomes double chromatid. The single becomes double. Single becomes double. So now we have 46 chromosomes but they are double chromatid. And here we have 46 chromosomes Single chromatid. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. Yeah. 46 single chromatid. Okay. Now 46 double chromatid or we can say 92 
because 46 sat up to 90. Okay, yes. The, uh, uh, another uh, chromatid. 92 uh, chromatid. Yes, yes. Okay. 92 uh, chromatid. 92 chromatid, but the chromosome is still 46. 46 chromosome. 46 chromosome, but each chromosome with two, two chromatids. Yes. Okay, uh, from where come uh, another uh, uh, chromatid? Because it, it, du it duplicates the DNA. Yes. Ah. It duplicates the DNA because now it thinks it should make sperm. So when it tries to make sperm, it duplicates the DNA. Yeah. Yes. It's clear? Okay. So this happens before first meiotic division. Before first meiotic division. Yeah. Yeah. Clear? Clear. Now this cell enters into first meiotic division. So it now this duplicate now it enters into the first meiotic division. It makes two cells now. One, two. Okay. Now each cell has how many? Twenty-three chromosomes with double chromatids. Yes. With double chromatids. <laughs> yes. So how many chromatids? Uh, 92. 40, uh, 46. 46. Yes. Like this? 43 yeah. chromosome. 23 chromosome, but each chromosome double chromatic. Yes. Yes. So 46 and 46. Yeah. It's clear? Yes. yes. So here, here the weight of version of DNA was 2N. Here the version of DNA 2N. Here the version of DNA 4N. But here again the version of DNA 2N. 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 So this, if this 2N now we want a gamete, we want a sperm with N only. Because if this 2N is sperm and this 2N over meat, yes. it will make 4N, which is abnormal. We want 2N. So what happens? It will again enter into a meiotic division. Second meiotic division. Here first. This is first. Yes. This is second meiotic division. So what happened now? There's two cells. Each 23 single chromatid. 23 single, single chromatid. Yeah. So, wasn't now N. Wasn't now N. It's clear? Yes. Easy. Easy. Good. If it is easy, then. So, this picture is showing you the same story. It becomes double chromatid, then you can see. They are arranged on a spindle. This is from mitosis. Okay? Yeah. So they arrange on this spindle. So what happens? That the centrioles, the centrioles, they move towards the opposite pole and they make a spindle. And the chromosomes they come on the spindle. And now each this is mitosis. So each chromosome divided into two, like second meiotic division. And now each cell has half half chromosomes. Okay? Now let's move to other picture. Now this is showing you meiosis. Now what happens in meiosis that okay. Now in meiosis there are two processes. Number one, the same chromosomes come together. You know in prophase, yeah. in prophase, the because every yes. cell has half chromosome from father, half from mother. Yes. So the same number of chromosomes they come together. And they exchange some genes, yes. okay? Called so they exchange over. this called crossing over. So now after crossing over, you can see this chromosome, blue chromosome, has some red genes, and this red chromosome from mother has some blue genes from father. So they exchange of genetic material, okay? And then they divide. Yes. So when the when does the first meiosis happen? When does oh, I tell you? Now the first meiotic division. In case of males, it occurs after puberty, at puberty, okay? But in case of females, it starts before birth, before birth. in the seventh month. When it starts? The seventh, seventh month. month. And then this first meiotic division starts and stops yeah. at birth. At birth, all the primary oocytes, they are in the first meiotic division and which stage? Prophase. And which phase of prophase? Diplotene. So diplotene stage of the prophase of the first meiotic division at birth. Now at puberty, now this, this girl 
all primary oocyte remains sleeping. At puberty, now every month, 5 to 15 oocytes only, they start again maturation. And they go into the prophase. In, they, they complete the prophase and enter into second biotic division. But only one of them ovulate. Mm -hmm. Out of 5 to 15, only one, one of them ovulate and complete second meiotic division if sperm come and hit them. Mm -hmm. Only then. Otherwise, it will not complete the second meiotic division. Okay? okay? Yeah. Doctor, you say then uh, in uh, prophase stage, exactly in where? In diplotene stage. Diplotene. Diplotene stage. I think there is uh, there is similar word in this uh, prophase stage, isn't it? This is prophase stage. Yes. Prophase has five stages. Five stage. So this diplotene is the second last. After this uh -huh. is dikinases. Yes, dikinases. Okay. 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 Now let's move to the other picture here. Okay. Now this is showing you a developmental stage. Now you can see. Now you can see this is the primary oocyte and this is the uh, primary spermatocyte. Now you can see primary oocyte, it makes more cytoplasm, then after first meiotic division it becomes secondary oocyte and the <coughs> chromosomes, half of the chromosome they go into another small cell and this is called polar body and uh, cytoplasm go into one cell. Okay. Then when these two cells again divide, enter into second meiotic division, they make one mature oocyte or ovum here and then they make three polar bodies, one from this polar body, two polar bodies and one polar body from here. On the other hand, in case of males, this all process starts at puberty and these primary spermatocytes, you can see, they duplicate their DNA and they enter into first meiotic division and they make the secondary spermatocytes. And then the secondary spermatocytes, they make spermatids or sperms, okay? Sperm now, this first meiotic division is very prolonged in case of males also. The total duration from here to here 64 days. And this is a very lengthy process. Especially the first meiotic division takes too much time. It close to 40 days. Okay. So this is what is showing you the gametogenesis, pictures of the gametogenesis, which I show you. Now, there is one important the point here. Now you can see that in first meiotic division, chromosomes they come together and they exchange their genes and then they separate. But sometimes what happens, they fail to separate, they don't separate. So when they don't separate, both chromosomes go into one cell. And the other cell have nothing. I have no this is called non, non disjunction. Disjunction. What is called non, non disjunction? Yes. In in this case, one sperm may be having 24 chromosomes, mm -hmm. and other sperm may be having 22 20, chromosomes. 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay. 23 chromosomes. 22. Sorry. 22. Okay. And you know Down syndrome, yes. Down syndrome is trisomy. trisomy. There may be involved many, uh, many uh, chromosomes. This is Turner syndrome or Prader Willi syndrome. This is a Prader. I don't tell you. This is Prader Willi, Prader -Willi syndrome. Mm -hmm. Now this is U genesis again. The same thing coming up and. Now this is a section from testis. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, ovary. 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 Sorry. ovary. Testis was this one. Maybe left. left. This is a section from the ovary. It's yes. only showing you formation of different, you know. The, you can see in the fourth month, lot of primary oocytes present. And then in the seventh month, primary spermatocytes form. And they enter into first meiotic division. And at the time of birth, you can see, the cells are still in the first biotic division and they are sleeping in the newborn. Now here is the spermatocyte. Now this is showing you the 
at puberty, what happened? When at puberty, the resumption of the oogenesis, okay? Is the oogenesis now resumes, it starts again. Now, this development takes place within the follicle. Within the okay. follicle. So now we have two developments, follicular development and oocyte development. Now, what is follicle? Follicle is a small structure inside which is present a oocyte. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Now, these, these cells are ovarian cells and then these ovarian cells you can see they are squamous cells before and then they turn into cuboidal cells now this structure is called primordial follicle when the cells are the squamous cells and when they become cuboidal it becomes primary follicle and then this primary follicle you can see this oocyte from here secretes a substance and it makes a covering around and this covering is called zona the glycoproteins which cover these oocyte all around okay and then you can see these cuboidal cells they become multiplied and they make more cuboidal cells now still it is a primary follicle but with multiple layer of these follicular cells and now these cells are also called granulosa cells because they start making hormone granules of the hormone estrogen therefore they are called granulosa cells okay now so what we have in primary follicle we have oocyte present in the center Sorry. then we have zona pellucida yeah. then we have granulosa cells okay yeah. now what happens that outside the now these granulosa cells they are resting on a basement membrane this is the basement membrane outside you can see basement membrane now outside the basement membrane are present the ovarian cells stromal cells now these ovarian stromal cells, these outside cells, they become organized into two layers. Theca interna and theca externa. Yeah. Now you can see, outside they become organized into these small dots are theca interna and further outside they have theca externa. Theca externa is mainly comprised of fibers, connective tissue fibers. And theca interna is mainly comprised of cells. Okay, so now they are the connective tissue round cells become rounded cells and they make theca interna and connective tissue fibers organize into a layer and they become theca externa. Now simultaneously what happens that these follicular cells or granulosa cells they start secreting a substance or now this fluid coming from outside inside the follicle mm -hmm. and they create small spaces mm -hmm. and these small spaces when created now is called secondary follicle. It's called Secondary follicle and all these species they join together and they push this ovum towards or oocyte towards one side. Mm -hmm. So they push oocyte towards one side and they make a big cavity. Now when the big one cavity is formed, it's called tertiary follicle or graphene follicle. Graphene, yes. Okay, and these cells which are surrounding the oocyte is they are known as cumulus oophorus cells or cumulus oophorus. So cumulus oophorus is a small layer of cells surrounding the oocyte. Inside okay. the follicle. Inside the follicle. Uh, yes. Now this whole structure is present inside the ovary. So this whole structure you can see this is ovary yeah. whole and this whole follicle is inside the ovary. This is ovum with cumulus oophorus. This is a uh, enteral cavity and is thicker internal and thick external. Okay. Yes. Now let's go to the next picture. Yeah. Tertiary, uh, tertiary follicle. Is it mature? Or not? Yes, mature. Now that was the that was the follicle. Now comes to the oocyte inside. Before. Yes. Thica interna, thica externa. What contains? Thica interna mainly cells. Interna. Interna. Externa yes. mainly fibers. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now see here. This is the follicle. Within the follicle, now we see the ovum which is present inside. Okay. Now, you, you know that ovulation takes place and just before ovulation there comes the LH hormone. You know? Yes, yes. LH hormone yes, comes, yes. Called LH surge. Yes. Now when this LH hormone comes about 12 hours before the ovulation, this LH results in so many things. Number one, this LH results in the ovulation. Number second, this LH is also results in the, now again, resumption of oogenesis. So primary oocyte, which was there in first meiotic division, when LH comes, it completes the first meiotic division. 
and enters into second meiotic. Yes. Okay. Under the influence of NH. So now what happens? This resumes. This completes the first meiotic division. You can see. This completes the first meiotic division. The cell divide. And now in this picture you can see a polar body here. Do you see the small cell here? Yes. Yeah. This is a polar body. So now this first meiotic division completes, and we have a one more secondary oocyte here and a small polar body. And now this secondary oocyte after ovulation enters and completes the second meiotic division and this polar body makes two more polar bodies. It's clear? Yes. Now this is space which is, this is zona pellucida, this is prime secondary oocyte and a polar body is present between secondary oocyte and zona pellucida. This space is called perivitaline space. What is called? Perivitaline space. This is the new for information. Yes. Okay. Which between the, the polar uh, body and... Polar body is present between zona pellucida and secondary uh, oocyte. Uh, this this is space is called perivitaline space. And which between which one because zona pellucida and secondary oocyte. I like Okay. Now here, this is section from the testis, and it is showing you this is the whole testicular wall. And it's showing you different stages, primary oocyte, then you can see some secondary oocytes here, and then secondary oocyte makes the spermatids. These are spermatids here. Yes. They are no, they are not, they are seen actually. Secondary spermatocytes may not be seen because they are formed for a very small period and they quickly enter become spermatids. Therefore, difficult to see secondary spermatids, but primary spermatocytes can be seen easily. Now this ends with this chapter. Let's start the next chapter. Sertoli cells, this is we are doing the gametogenesis, not histology of the testes. Now see one more important point here. Now, in case of ovum, we have primary oocyte and then two a secondary oocyte and polar body separate. Then secondary oocyte become you know ovum and two polar bodies separate cells separate. But in case of spermatogenesis, the cells remain connected. The cells they don't separate. They remain connected. Their cell membranes remain connected. And this is you can see. For example, this is one spermate, this is one, let's say, where is this type B? Okay. Now let's say these are the spermatids, uh, I'm sorry, the primary spermatocytes. And each primary spermatocyte you can see is divided into two spermatocytes, two spermatocytes, two spermatocytes, two spermatocytes, type A. And then these type A spermatocytes further divide in differentiate into type B spermatocytes. So this type A spermatocyte makes two type B. This type A makes two type B. This type A makes two type B. Now you can see these type B spermatocytes, they remain connected. You see? They remain, their cell are not completely separate. Finally, they remain connected. And then you can see these cells are And they become separate after final formation. You can see that it's still connected. And when spermatids form, now they separate. Now they separate. So this is a difference between oogenesis and spermatogenesis. In case of oogenesis, the cells they are separate from the beginning. From the beginning. Yes. But in the spermatogenesis, the cells they remain connected. connected. And finally when the sperms form, now they separate. separate. Okay? Yeah. You can see? Now they separate. Okay. Now let's go to the second chapter. <coughs> The 
his computers are now old. All is good. Allah is see, I have no idea what is happening. Now, now this is what we have done. Now ovulation takes place. Now you can see ovulation occurs. This is the ovary here, and within the ovary, this follicle is present. Now, when LH comes, what happens actually? Now, when LH comes, number one, the something the ovulation. Why it starts the ovulation? Can anyone answer? What does it do? Increase the the, the cavity. And the yes. Okay. Yes. And and uh, to push out the ovary. The ovary. Yes. Why? Why? Why push out the ovary? Yes. The pressure. Uh, the pressure increase. Yes. yes. You can see. You can. You, I know you know this. But what, how you can answer? You can answer that. When LH comes, actually, yeah. the blood supply to the ovary is little bit increased. When there's more blood supply, okay. So what happens? There's more formation of the enteral fluid. So it will increase more pressure. Number one. This is number one point. Number second. When LH comes, you know the cells which are present in the ovary. The stromal cells they start releasing a hormone called an enzyme collagenase. What is the name of enzyme? Enzyme collagenase. collagenase. Yeah. So when collagenase is released, this collagenase actually makes the collagen fibers dead. So ovary surface becomes weak. So at this point now, pressure is increasing, surface becomes weak. So ovum comes out. out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now when ovum comes out, okay. Now. This ovum comes out with the cells of cumulus pufferus, and now these cells are called as corona radiata cells. And this part of the follicle, which is inside the ovary now, yeah. under the influence of LH, these cells become lutein cells. They become luteal cells or lutein cells, and this whole structure is now called corpus luteal. What is luteal? What are, what is what changes they develop under the LH? They make more, each cell make more smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Each cell have more fat inside. So now they are able to make more progesterone. Clear? Okay. So now these are the changes. Now this corpus luteum is formed. Okay. And this corpus luteum starts secreting progesterone. Okay? And, uh, and, uh, little estrogen. Yes. yes, little estrogen. And it will become a... Uh, Now, this ovum it comes out and this ovum comes and you can see this fallopian tube. Yeah. Now this fallopian tube has at its one end which is close to ovary these finger like projections which are called fimbria. And these fimbria they surround the surface of the ovary and they take the ovum inside. And when they take the ovum inside surrounded by the cubulus or the corona radiata cells. Now this fallopian tube has ciliated epithelium, simple columnar ciliated epithelium and simultaneously this fallopian tube has a smooth muscle in its wall. So the smooth muscle they start contracting towards the ovary, uh, towards the uterus mm -hmm. and cilia starts moving towards the uterus. So they push the ovum towards the yes. uterus. Okay? So now what happens? This is, let's say this is day zero. So now this moves inside the uh, you, uh, fallopian tube and meanwhile this fallopian tube has cells and these cells they are providing nutrition to this ovum. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what happens now? Well, which, which kind of cells that uh, it, it will uh, nutrient the, the ovary? The over the simple columnar ciliated cell they have this they have secretion. Mm -hmm. the secretion they secrete Back their secretion the inside the fallopian tube. And this secretion provides nutrient. They are rich in glycogen. 
Now, let's see. Now you can see, this is the ovum within the fallopian tube, mm -hmm. and these are all sperms. Okay. Let's say at the same time, if the sperm come in within the female genital tract, female reproductive tract, now these sperms, they try to reach the, you know, ovum. Mm -hmm. yeah. Many of them they reach, they try to, but only one of them comes. Okay. When one of them comes and, you know, hit the sona palacida, yeah. and touches the surface of the ovum here. Now from within the ovum we have some granules called cortical granules and these granules they release their enzymes and these enzymes they come and they change the structure of zona pellucida so that no more sperms can come inside. Okay, now this is called zona cortical reaction. It's called zona cortical reaction. So the polyspermy or many sperms they cannot enter now, only one sperm comes. Okay. At the same time, so now you can see the sperm has come inside, the one sperm has come inside. Okay. And at the same time now you can see the sperm has come inside and when they come inside, now this is an ovum, this is the nucleus. Okay. Now the nucleus of the female ovum and the nucleus of the male sperm, they are known as pronuclear. We don't say the nuclear. What we call them? Pronuclear. Why? Because, because they have no a large fusion. number of chromosomes. That's why we call them pronuclear. And also there is no fusion between okay. So now what? This pronucleus of the male sperm and pronuclear of the female ovum, they come close together. And now you can see that they come close together and they duplicate their DNA. They duplicate their DNA. Now this cell is called, now when they, when they come together, so now again this cell is called zygote. And zygote has how many chromosomes now? 46. 23 chromatids from father, 23 from mother. So it has 46 chromatids. Now these 46 chromatids again duplicate their DNA. Okay, so now they enter into mitosis. Enter into mitosis. 46 chromosomes. 46, they become 46 chromosomes now. Yes, not A whole 46 chromatids. And now these 46 chromatids here, they duplicate their DNA and they become 46 chromosomes. And now these 46 chromosomes, they go into mitosis. This is called cleavage. It's called cleavage. Yes. So one cell become two, and two cell become four, and four cell become sixteen, and then when they become sixteen, we call marula. We call marula. So you can see now. This is a real picture. Now this picture is here. Two four is still zona pellucida is there. You can see four cell. So now you can see one cell was big. 2 cell half size, 4 cell 1 quarter size mm -hmm. and 16 cell become smaller and smaller. That's why this is called cleavage. Cleavage, yes. It's called mitotic division but cleavage because cells are becoming smaller and smaller yes. in size. Okay. Now you can see. Zona pellucida is still there. You can see. Now these cells are, this process is called compaction. Mm -hmm. These cells are close together. They are attached with one another, adhere with one another. Mm -hmm. They are compact cells. You can see them. Yeah. Real picture. Yeah, Morula. Yeah, they have junctions. Now what happens? When the number of cells increases, yeah. now these cells, the number increases, so now they mm -hmm. say organize. Some cells go towards one side and yeah. some cells, you know, they go towards the periphery and their cavity press, cavity is press, develops here. Let me see if they, no, we don't have this picture here. Actually, this picture tells you this actually, this was full of cells. Yes. Cavity starts within morula or after morula? After morula. After morula. So morula there is no cavity. No, morula there is no cavity. Is there a periodic plasticity? No. Morula is a simple collection of cells. When this morula become blastula, it become blastula. The number of cells become maybe 500. Now some cells they go towards okay. one side. Okay. Uh, no, not in the morula. 
not in the body. Okay? Now, yes. No. Now, when gorilla has nothing, it's only mass, cell mass. Now, when the number of cells increases, now these cells, some of is, it, is these cells start secreting a fluid, or you can say that some fluid comes inside this, and when the fluid comes inside, now this space is created, and some cells are pushed towards the side, and some cells push towards the one pole. Now this stage is called blastocystis stage or blastula. So the marula is uh, marula is only mass, mass cell of mass. mass. Okay. Now this blastula develops a cavity called blastocyst cavity, okay. and this is inner cell mass, and this is outer cell mass. Okay. Now these cells, blastocysts, these outer cell mass cells, you can see they are also called as trophoblastic cells. Now these trophoblastic cells they start multiplying. And when they start multiplying, they migrate towards outside. Okay. And when they migrate towards outside, they lose their cell walls. And when they lose their cell walls, now this is called a syncytial trophoblast. Syncytial trophoblast. And inside cells, they are called cytotrophoblast. So we have cytotrophoblast inside, and we have syncytial trophoblast cells outside. Okay. Now these syncytial trophoblastic cells, they release enzyme collagenase, you know, and lytic enzymes, hydrolytic enzymes. And these enzymes, now this is uterus. This is uterus. So these enzymes, when they are released, they, de they degenerate the collagen and they degenerate the intracellular substance. And it starts going inside the endometrium. Okay. Now the, the, this is, it starts at fifth, five and a half days. When does it start? Five and half days after ovulation. You can see now. So now you can see the time one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So at five and a half to six days they arrive here. You can see. This is seventh stage. Yes. This four and fifth day they arrive here. And five and a half day they start going inside. Okay? Five and a half day they start going inside. This is endometrium, this is myometrium. So they're going into endometrium. The part of the endometrium which is deep to it is now called decidua bizarris. Decidua bizarris, yes. <coughs> the part which is in front, decidua capsularis. And the whole rest is decidua rightus. <coughs> now you can see here. This is ovulation, this is the maturation of the follicle. Yes. And in the middle of the follicle, let's say this is one. No, this is no. this this zero. Is, you say in Arabic tarikh? Yes. Date? Yes. 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 Tarikh. So this is tarikh awal here. Yeah. And this is 14th day. Okay. Ovulation takes half place. Half month. Yes. Okay, half month. Okay. Plus minus one day. Mm -hmm. And when ovulation takes place, mm -hmm. now another six days mm -hmm. it implants. So implants on 20th day, which day implants, 20th day implants, okay, 14th day ovulation, another 6th day to come in uterus and, and implantation, so implantation may be 20, 21 day, okay, this implantation takes place, okay, now what happens, the corpus luteum was, this become corpus luteum, so this corpus luteum, if pregnancy takes place, this corpus luteum will survive, will stay, yeah. will live, yeah. okay, and this corpus luteum, to make corpus luteum live, we need LH hormone, yeah. what yeah. hormone we need, LH, now this LH now, if pregnancy takes place, will come from this cytotrophoblast layer, you know this cytotrophoblast layer, of the conceptus, yeah. this layer will secrete hormone, which is called human Chorionic gonadotrophism. Yeah. This is just like LH. LH. Yeah. And it will come from here to here okay. and make the corpus luteum stay alive. Alive, yeah. Okay? Okay. And this will stay alive till three months. Three to four months. Okay. After three to four months, now placenta secrete progesterone and this will Not become non-functional. Oh, no, 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 three weeks. Three to four months. Okay. okay. Now you can see during the implantation, 
the blood vessels, you can see they are dilated, they are supplied. Let's say the pregnancy does not take place. So what happens? So when you become uh, Let's see. I think we have a picture here. See here. Now we, you can just think of this. We have a pituitary gland, hypothalamus. Yeah. And from the hypothalamus, we have this pituitary gland. So from the hypothalamus, hormones come on the pituitary gland. And from the pituitary gland is released gonadotrophin. We have two gonadotrophins, follicle stimulating hormone yeah. and luteinizing hormone. Yeah. Now you can see, follicle stimulating hormone comes on the follicle and causes maturation of the follicle. Okay. And just before ovulation, LH comes. You can see. Yeah. Now this LH starts coming at this stage and it reaches into the peak on this stage. All of a sudden, lot of LH come and cause ovulation. Okay. And this LH also makes corpus luteum. Okay. Yeah. Now this LH, if pregnancy does not take place and then the progesterone is increasing, increasing, and this progesterone will go again on to pituitary and stop LH. And inhibit the LH. And on 23rd day, LH amount decrease. And decrease and decrease. So now no progesterone and no LH and no progesterone. So this corpus luteum become corpus albicans. It's clear? Everyone? So what makes, if pregnancy does not take place, what makes the corpus luteum to degenerate? Uh, From corpus uh, luteum which hormone comes? Uh, uh, progesterone. So, so this progesterone go to so pituitary. The, uh, okay. 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 And okay. stop the negative feedback. Negative okay. feedback. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. This is called negative feedback. feedback. Okay. Clear? Let's do the chapter. <coughs> Second week of development. This is the best one. Second week and third week. Okay. Now first week ends. Now second week is still implantation is going on. You can see a way, this is all uterus. This is all endometrium here, okay? Mm -hmm. This is endometrium, you can see endometrial gland. You can see the, the conceptus, the blastocyst is going inside. And you can see the outer cell mass and inner cell mass. And then you can see that this is syncytotrophoblast and this is cytotrophoblast, okay? Now, why in fifth and half day implantation takes place, why? At fifth and half day implantation takes place, why? Why not a wall? Uh, Excellent. So zona pellucida degenerates now. So till the zona pellucida is there, implantation will not take place. Okay. So now, see here. Now this is you can see. Now the inner cell mass has divided or differentiated into two layers: a hypoblast and epiblast. And within the epiblast, a small cavity you can see has made the epiblastic cavity. Now you can see the endometrial blood vessels are present here. This is syncytotrophoblast. So now what happened? The syncytotrophoblast, I told you they release collagenase yes. and some other hydrolytic enzymes. Yes. And these enzymes, they will make these blood vessels to, they will damage these blood vessels. So when they make the damage, and now what happens? That's within the syncytotrophoblast layer, the small spaces will appear. Yeah. Yeah. These are called lacunae. Lacunae. You can see now, yes. these lacunae they appear within syncytial trophoblast and these blood vessels when damaged, their blood will come into lacunae. This happens on 13th day. When it happens, 13th day and we say that now you placental circulation start. So now maternal blood is coming and feeding the baby okay um, now baby means what this maternal blood come into lacunae okay. and from here oxygen and nutrients absorb and supply to this okay okay now what happens next that this hypoblast layer mm -hmm. these cells they proliferate and they make a layer inside the trophoblast layer 
You can see the make a layer inside the trophoblast, this yellow layer. Now this layer is called user's membrane uh -huh. or extra embryonic exolomic membrane. Yes. Yes. So exolomic membrane or user's membrane. Now this blastocyst cavity, we change the name and we call prime Prime primitive yolk sac. Yolk sac. Or primary yolk sac. sac. So primary yolk sac or primitive yolk sac. Okay? Now see what happens next. Uh, doctor, the lacunae, uh, the lacunae, it's, uh, it's space. Previously, it's, uh, it's no, there's no previously. Lacunae, since sexual trophoblast layer, since sexual cells become dead, mm -hmm. and there's small ah, space yeah. created. Okay. okay. Now see, now you can see that from this user's membrane, yeah. these okay. user membrane cells, they proliferate. And when they proliferate, they make a new layer of cells between trophoblast and user's membrane. Yes? Uh, inside or trophoblast? Towards the outside. And this layer of cell now is called extra embryonic Zero. mesodermal cells. Extra embryonic mesodermal cells. Yes. Here. Yes. You can't see here because this is a later stage. Cavity is produced now. Serum is later. Uh -huh. Owl, these cells, they multiply. And they make a layer of cells called extra embryonic mesoderm. Yeah, wow. Now, within the extra embryonic mesoderm, a cavity appears now. Oh, yeah. Small cavities, and then these small cavities, they make a big cavity, and this big cavity called extra embryonic Yes. Yeah. 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 The extra embryonic then comes from which layer? Now, you see, what did I tell you? What is written in Langman? Yeah. The Langman in biology say that this extra embryonic coelom cells extra embryonic mesodermal cells come from user's memory. Okay? But in the other books are the other versions which I don't tell you. Some books say they come from the trophoblast. Yes. Okay? So we don't go to that. We go, we confine ourselves to Langman. Okay? What the Langman say? Langman say these cells they come from extra embryon, this user's memory. Okay? Or the yeah, yolk sac membrane cells. Okay? Now this structure is also called as Primary um, uh, um, uh, umbilical vesicle. It's called primary umbilical vesicle. I told you in my class earlier. Now see, this cavity will become big. So now what? In the next stage, this cavity becomes big. I I don't know why we have some pictures missing from here. Uh, I think they will appear if you give them some time. Okay. No, they don't appear. See here. I give time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, because I have I have done it earlier, so I know mm -hmm. some pictures are I don't know why they are missing. Okay, anyways, the next picture you see here. Now yeah. you can see lot of lacunae, full of maternal blood, intraplacental yeah. circulation is fully established, and now we see that the extra embryonic cellum is becoming big and big, compressing. Yes. Okay, yes. and yolk sac becoming smaller and. Smaller, Small. Small. Yes. okay, because this cavity is becoming big and pushing the yolk sac. Yes. So yolk sac is becoming smaller, and mm -hmm. simultaneously, what happens from the height from this hypoblast, another layer of cells come inside. Mm -hmm. Now, when this another layer of cells come inside the yolk sac, primary yolk sac, now it is called secondary, secondary yolk sac. Yolk sac. Secondary now it is called secondary yolk, yolk sac. Yes. And now this this cavity, big cavity. Is which is produced within the extra embryonic coelom yes. is now called chorionic cavity. Chorionic cavity. cavity. Yeah. So extra embryonic coelom or chorionic cavity. Yes. And then we see that what? We see that now these two layers of the extra embryonic mesoderm, this layer which is close to trophoblast is called somatic, somatic layer and which is close to yolk sac is Okay. Part of the yolk sac may become detached and inside this yolk, the extra embryonic mesoderm, and this is called extra embryonic cyst, exolomic cyst, uh, exolomic so. cyst. Uh, Actually, this is part of this, but becomes separate. Becomes separate. Can we see uh, this, uh, this, well. this remaining is uh, what? Never. What? This is very small. No, no, no. I mean uh, the umbilical cord. You mean? No, no, no. Not the umbilical. Uh, the tertiary yolk sac, the remaining. No, no. There is no tertiary yolk sac. But other 
Uh, there is no tertiary oxide, believe me. Okay, yes. Uh, do you understand what I mean? Huh? Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I understand. There is no tertiary oxide, there is only primary and secondary oxide. Just? Tertiary oxide is only in Egypt. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Just. Okay. This is. You know, sometimes some authors of I am not that big. I am not that big scientist. But sometimes some professors they are so experienced and they are so good that they can give their own names. So this is how I believe this third primary, secondary, tertiary yolk sac name comes. Maybe some author think that this is tertiary yolk sac. But actually, if you follow the standard textbooks, you will not find this term. I have seen so many books, and there's even in the Greys and you know, the KLM and Langman, you will not find this tertiary yolk sac. It's only primary yolk sac, and the secondary yolk sac, and the secondary yolk sac becomes smaller and smaller. smaller yeah. And finally, we give it a name like vitelline duct Vitaline or vitellointestinal duct. We don't say tertiary yolk sac. Okay? Uh -huh. So, we, what we do in our classes, we follow the standard terminology. Okay? Because you should not be confused. Uh -huh. If somebody has told you about tertiary yolk sac, you yes. may be right. I don't differ. But this is only a term. So, don't be confused. You can call it tertiary yolk sac. But here, what we what we see that this standard textbook called it exists. Yes. Okay. Now this so chorionic cavity is becoming bigger and bigger. Okay. Now see what. Now simultaneously you can see this is the trophoblast. Now this trophoblast layer is going inside this incisional trophoblast. Do you see that? Yes. So this is going inside this this incisional trophoblast. Now this going inside this sensation trophoblast, now we call it the primary villa. Primary. Primary. What call them? Primary? Primary villa. Okay. Now this primary villa, they become secondary villa. And, and then tertiary And then tertiary villa, yes. But there is no tertiary villa. No, there is no tertiary <laughs> Sorry. So in the second week, we see the primary villa has formed. Now you can see this is the site of some implantation, sites of abnormal sites of implantation. You can see the implantation normally takes place in the uterus, mm -hmm. in the upper part, on the right side, in the posterior wall. So, right superior, right superior quadrant and posterior. Uh, but it may occur anywhere, like in the inferior part, close to cervix, <coughs> within the fallopian tube within the surface of ovary and even within the intestinal membrane called mesenchyme. Yeah. So these are the common sites of ectopic pregnancy. Now we come to the third week, I believe. But uh, so which uh, will be into, uh, which uh, ovary will, be, uh, uh, will occur? Uh, one month, one only. Uh, yes, uh, we have two ovary. Uh, two ovaries. Two fallopian tubes. Two fallopian tubes. Each month, maybe from this ovary or this ovary. Uh -huh. And this cyclic, we don't know why. Yeah. How? So many questions we don't know. Mm -hmm. So this is one question we don't know how this rhythm is set. If a girl, maybe pubertal girl, 14 years of age, starts ovulation from the right, from the right. or may start from the left, we don't know. Okay. So this cyclic rhythm we don't know. This is something in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay. This is the mo this is the common site of ectopic pregnancy within the peritoneum behind the uterus. Okay, so this is rectum, this is uterus, this is vagina, this is behind the rectum. Uh, I'm sorry, behind the uterus, in yes. front of the rectum, this is peritoneum, and within the peritoneum, this is called pouch of Douglas. And in the pouch of Douglas, this, this gestational sac is present. Let's start the third week and we'll end at the third week, okay? Take your time. I have taken my time. No. Oh. <laughs> take, take a lot of time. Take, take a lot of time? I want to pray. Pray is okay. This is also, you know, pray. Yeah, okay. We are learning and teaching something is pray. Okay. We, are we are doing our duty.
Now this is just to show you a picture that this is now in the third week we have two layers, uh, two layers of the inner cell mass, the epiblast and hypoblast and this is the mesoderm has developed, okay, this is splanchnic and sorry this is a somatic and this is splanchnic, okay, mesoderm and this cavity is chorionic cavity here, okay, and this is syncytial trophoblast with black units. Now, if we look at this picture of the embryonic disc, epiblast and hypoblast. So this is a disc-like structure, epiblast and hypoblast, two layers. Now you can see that on the surface of epiblast, a small groove appear in the caudal part. This groove is called as primitive streak. And this primitive streak, at the same time, the epiblast cells, they are multiplying, they are proliferating, they are dividing, okay? and they are making more cells. So what happens now? When they make more cells, this is primitive streak. Now this primitive streak, you can see the upper end, the cranial end of the primitive streak becomes a little bit swollen, bit enlarged, and this is called primitive node. Yes. What's the difference between primitive node and primitive pit? Primitive pit is the opening in the node. Yes. Okay, the hole in the node. Yeah, with the, the starting of a uh, notochord. Yeah. Maybe last cells uh, yeah. from yeah. the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us see that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now what do you see that in the next picture? Yeah. See here. Now these are these primitive, this is the epiblast. The cells of epiblast, they are multiplying. And then you can see the cells, they are multiplying. They are passing, they are coming to the primitive groove, no, uh, primitive streak. You can see. This is primitive streak here. Mm -hmm. So the epiblast cells, they multiply and they come into the primitive streak. Now when they come in the primitive streak, they pass down. And when they pass down, on the lower surface is present hypoblast. So they fall down with such a pressure that they remove the hypoblastic cells. Mm -hmm. So whole hypoblast layer is now replaced by another new layer of cells. And this new layer of cells is coming from epiblastic cells. Now this layer of cells is called endoderm. What do you call? Endoderm. And then they make another layer of cells and this new layer of cells is called, called mesoderm. It's called mesoderm. But remember, the cells which are passing from the primitive pit, the cells which are passing from here, these cells, they will go straight. These cells, they will go straight up to this prochordal plate and they will make they will make what? Noto. Noto. They will make noto. And direction toward to uh, cranial. Yeah. Cordial to cranial. Yes. So now you can see yes. the cells which are coming, they go straight and they make noto cord. And now we have a mesoderm, we have an ectoderm, we have an endoderm. Now we have three layers. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this third week of development is called week of gastrulation mm -hmm. or gastrulation means formation of three germinal layers okay so then we are making three germinal layers and now we can see that this is the primitive pit mojud in the epiblast and then we have this notochord here mm -hmm. and endoderm here now for the some time so now we have a notochord in the midline, we have mesoderm, this is called intraembryonic mesoderm. What is it called? Intraembryonic. And then outside we have extraembryonic mesoderm. And in the ectoderm we have endoderm. Okay? Now what? Now this notochord, what are the functions of notochord? Can anyone tell me? Uh, give uh, some rigidity. It gives some strength. Okay? Axial strength. Number one. Uh, it makes the body axis. Yes. Yeah. Establish the body axis. Mm -hmm. Number two. What is the most important function? Uh, the muscles and uh, the spinal cord. Spinal cord. Not formation. It causes the neural plate. The neural plate. What is that called? The uh, plate. Neural plate. No. A neural neural plate. plate is in the ectoderm. Neural plate. Neural plate. Listen to. Listen to. Listen to. Listen to my question. The notochord is between ectoderm and endoderm. Yes. Okay. And neural plate will form in ectoderm. Yes. So what is the function of notochord? Uh, 
uh, not to call uh, support to, uh, 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 nutrition uh, to formation of uh, neural tube as a guidance, as a guidance what is that uh, called uh, neurulation means formation of neural tube yeah. this guidance is called what induction yeah. this is called induction. induction what is I mean I mean these cells of notochord so what I'm saying these cells of notochord in the midline, they are present in the midline. Yes. They will send signals, they release some chemical cytokines, mm -hmm. and these cytokines will go in the ectodermal Ectodermal. cells mm -hmm. and they make them neural ectodermal cells. So the ectoderm become neuroectoderm, where in yeah, the yeah. Midline. midline. This is called induction. induction. So it means what? It means if notochord does not form, neural tube will not form. So whole nervous system will not nothing, form. Nothing. So Clear? So this is called inductive influence. Okay? Inductive. Induction or inductive influence. So function of notochord. Function of those. So now with three functions. Number one, it is in the midline, so it makes the body axis right, left. Number one. Number second, it is a midline, it is a solid structure, so it gives strength, axial strength during early development. Mm -hmm. okay. Number two. Number third, it makes the induction yep. of the induction. neural tube. Yeah. And it makes the whole nervous system possible, it makes the nervous system formation possible. Okay? Mm -hmm. Please read the stages of the notochord. A whole notochord, then notochordal plate, then notochord for tube, then notochord. Again, right? Yes. Remember this, this is very important. Yes. Uh, it's about the formation of the arm choice and the notochord. Yeah, we'll come to that. We are, we are actually following pictures, right? So when we we'll see the picture, I will tell you. <coughs> Maybe in the next week. So this is all genetics need not to remember this all. And so the neural tube formation also begins in the third week. Okay? And the notochord formation takes place in the third week. Okay? And simultaneously the this is a congenital condition called I believe sirenomelia. Sirenomelia. You can see the lower half of the body has, does not form. Okay, because of loss of the mesoderm, then but other defects. So this is condition, this is congenital anomaly. Now see, this condition. Anyone can know, anyone know what is this? This baby newborn has born with such big tumor in the sacro-coxygeal region. What is this? Anyone has any idea? Uh, okay. Maybe from the membrane which uh, the Yes. Uh, the new, uh, you know, there was no future for the industry. Okay. Now, what is the function of primitive streak now? Why the primitive streak develops? Uh, Just so to make three germ layers. Yes. yes. Okay. So when the three germ layers are formed, okay. the function of primitive streak is over. Now we don't need primitive streak. Yes. So this primitive streak will degenerate completely. Okay. If the primitive streak does not degenerate and persist, then it will bake this tumor. And this baby, because the cells are proliferating in the sacrococcygeal region, so this baby will born with this tumor. Okay. So remember this. Now this picture is showing you the villi formation. So in the second week, we have primary villi formed. Okay? So what is the primary villi? Then inside this incisional trophoblast, trophoblast come. You can see this light green is trophoblast, this dark green is incisional trophoblast. And then what happens? That inside the, if you remember, inside the cytotrophoblast, trophoblast, we have somatic layer of extraembryonic mesoderm. So this somatic layer of the extraembryonic mesoderm will grow inside. So when it grows inside, it's Which called is in the third week. It's no, called no, 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 no. 
somatic layer of the extramembranic mesoderm somatoplur not somatopluric layer of the extramembranic mesoderm will grow inside the primary villi and now it will make secondary villi so you can see what is present in the primary villi since cytotrophoblast outside cytotrophoblast inside what is present in secondary villi since cytotrophoblast outside then trophoblast and then extramembranic mesoderm somatic layer and then this this somatic layer will become differentiate into blood vessels mm -hmm. so when blood vessels fall now it is tertiary villi tertiary okay mm -hmm. now remember all these structures cytotrophoblast since cytotrophoblast this cytotrophoblast yes. and this mesoderm yes. these three structures together they call chorionic membrane yes. what they call chorionic membrane therefore this villi is also called chorionic villi what is called Chorion. these villi are called chorionic villi yes. any question any confusion yes uh, what actually uh, the villi is the tertiary tertiary villi is chorionic villi okay yes 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 got it okay yes hey yeah okay okay yes so if you got a question in exam this will say describe the formation of chorionic villi chorionic villi is formation of tertiary villi remember so first then primary villi then secondary then tertiary okay yeah what about the chorionic frondosa chorionic frondosum that is placenta that's placenta and placenta this is placenta i will tell you then you have one picture okay now see so now you can see the villi outside syncytial trophoblast growing mm -hmm. then trophoblast go inside and it grows and grows and finally come outside the syncytial trophoblast so this is mother this is decidua mm -hmm. basalis this is decidua basalis. Yeah. basalis or endometrium so owl between endometrium and fetus was syncytial trophoblast yes but now cytotrophoblast grow outside and make a continuous layer outside the syncytial trophoblast okay so now which is the most outer layer of the placenta cytotrophoblast oh, finally okay because it keeps on growing keeps on growing so from the anchoring villi yeah from the anchoring villi it's on growing yeah there's like two types the anchoring is a How can you know? Uh, I tell you. I tell you. I tell you. Okay. Now you can see this mesoderm is differentiated into arteries and veins. Okay. Doctor, okay. again your point. The last point. Ah, uh, last point. You see, if you go to if you go to this picture, what is uh, most outside? Ah, uh, that's inside. Yes. What is inside? Ah, uh, right. And then mesoderm. Yes. But what happens as the pregnancy advances? Uh, yeah. Towards the end of the first trimester. Not even towards the first, towards the end, first trimester, eight to nine week. What happens? The cytotrophoblast further grow and go out of syncytio trophoblast. So what is present between mother and fetus now? Cytotrophoblast. Cytotrophoblast. Yes. Remember, owl it was syncytio trophoblast, but now cytotrophoblast come. So if we remove the fetus, if we remove the embryo, we will see what is the most outer layer. Uh, cytotrophoblast yes if we remove okay. the embryo if we remove the embryo and see in the uterus see in the uterus okay so between uterus and embryo cytotrophoblast okay not since i show yes this is What the new things the what the economy the economy that is we we'll come to that we we'll come to that picture i will tell you then come to this picture i will tell you now you can see here Now you can see that this is the embryo here. This is the embryo, and this is the placenta here, right? Mm -hmm. The most outside you can see the trophoblast, but at some point it's still syncytio. Okay? At some point it's still syncytio. This is all this is what? This is all endometrium. Okay? Mm -hmm. This all endometrium. This all endometrium. So what is present outside? Syncytio trophoblast, but some places syncytio, and these are called as the villi. they are called as the villi and this is intervillous spaces they are villi okay, right mm -hmm. now see these structures they develop all over villi will develop all over 
Now the part of the decidua where this villi will develop, these finger like projections will develop, mm -hmm. is called as chorion frondosum. Yes. Yes. Chorion frondosum. Yes. And the other part where these villi will disappear yes. and it becomes smooth, this will become chorion levi. Levi. Chorion levi. levi yes. Chorion levi, mm -hmm. where there is no villi mojoo. Yes. So yes. it has a smooth appearance. Yes. And chorion frondosum, where it's Winker like projections are mojood, we call chorion frendosum. Yes? And the outer mass for, for the chromoly is uh, cytotrophoblastic. Cytotrophoblastic. You can see all over cytotrophoblastic. You can see all over cytotrophoblastic. Completely, this whole conceptus, the whole kurratul kadam, which is conceptus, is outside actually cytotrophoblastic. So that is the end of towards the end of the first trimester, from the end of the first trimester. Yeah. So this ends this week. Okay. I think we should stop here. No. Yes. No? Yes. Uh, okay, yes. Let, yes. Let, let me see if I can do one more week. I see one. Yeah. What's the notochordal fate? Ah, what is the notochordal fate? What Mucus happens with the notochord? Uh, so, it will, now uh, just first think of the functions of the notochord. It will become uh, axis. It will become, it establishes the axis, yes. okay, it makes the neural tube, neural tube. now its function is over, so it will degenerate, degenerate. Yeah. it will degenerate yeah. completely except in the intervertebral disc, a small part in the center and this will call as nucleus pulposus, nucleus ajali, can you turn on the light, ajali, now we have this notochord, let's see, let me see. This is the ectoderm, this is the endoderm, and I make intoderm with some different color. And, oh, I'm sorry. This is again black. Let's say this is middle okay? Okay. This is big. And let's say, here is the notochord. And let's say here is the notochord. Now this notochord makes here neural tube, okay? If I make this front view, we can say that we have the ectoderm, we have the uh, this notochord, okay? Now this notochord, let's say it's like this. Now this notochord make neural tube. This notochord makes give the axis to the body. Okay. Now what is present on the sides of a notochord? This is all mesoderm, right? Yes. This is all mesoderm. All mesoderm. So what is present on the sides of this notochord? Mesoderm. Okay. Now this mesoderm and this mesoderm differentiate into three parts. This mesoderm differentiate into three parts. What is these parts? The part which is close to this is called par axial. Okay? Now then we have a small plate called intermediate. And then air lateral. Okay. Now let us see. This par axial mesoderm on both sides. Yeah, the same. This par on the both sides. This par axial mesoderm will form vertebrae. Will form vertebrae. So this par axial mesoderm of this side and this side, it will his mesodermal cells will proliferate and they make vertebrae. Somites and the somites later on make vertebrae. Okay. So these vertebrae. Take the part of notochord inside. Yes. So part of notochord come inside the inside the inside the, the somites, you can say, right? Yes. Or, and then these this whole notochord will degenerate except a small part in the center of the inter 
vertebral disc. So this intervertebral disc is like a structure like this. All mesoderm develops from mesoderm of the somite, except in the center, uh -huh. and where notochord is present as a jelly-like substance called nucleus. Pulposus. Yes. Yes. Okay. Clear? Yes. So the somites of right side, somites of left side, the cells they proliferate and they surround the notochord. And then later on, the whole of the notochord disappears except a small part in the center and it's called nucleus pulposus. That's it. It's clear? Yes. Similarly, all the mesoderm, remember, all the mesoderm. Yeah. which is embryonic mesoderm will become jelly-like. All the mesoderm mm. which is embryonic, if it is present, it will become jelly-like. The other example, because this no notochord is actually mesoderm, right? Mm. Actually, they are coming from the epiblast and within the mesoderm, mm. they become notochord. Mm. On the other hand, if you remember the extra embryonic mesoderm, you remember the stalk? Yes. Connecting the stalk? Yes. 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 So connecting the stalk, whole of the connecting stalk will become umbilical cord. Umbilical. Yes. Okay. Yes. Whole of the umbilical cord will become uh, umbilical cord. Yes. And within the umbilical cord, these mesodermal cells become Wharton's jelly. Yes. You yeah. remember Wharton's yes, jelly? Yes, 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 what yes. is Wharton's jelly? They are actually mesodermal cells. So wherever there is extra embryonic mesoderm, embryonic mesoderm is present, as such, dot not differentiate any structure, it will become it's clear. What about the fate of Alan Toys and Jerox? Alan Toys, you want me to go to that picture? Yes. Okay. Just turn off the light. I'm sorry. And the fate of So you can see in the epiblastoderm, in the midline, neural tube formation begins. Okay? Mm -hmm. So just below it is present notochord. Mm -hmm. Under the notochord is present this Indeed. endoderm. And this mesoderm you can see becomes three. Mm -hmm. This is paraxial, this is intermediate, mm -hmm. this is lateral plate. Mm -hmm. So lateral plate of mesoderm develops this cavity. Mm -hmm. This is called intraembryonic coelom. What is it called? Intraembryonic coelom. Outside we have extra embryonic, but now it is within the intra embryonic coelom. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is intra embryonic coelom, this is intermediate mesoderm, this is par axial mesoderm, and this par axial mesoderm you can see on both sides of notochord. This black is notochord. And then you can see this yeah. neural ectoderm starts making neural tube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this neural tube is made at the margins, these cells are neural present, is. these cells are called neural crest cells. Mm -hmm. So the neural crest cells at both margins, they join together and now they separate. So you can see in this picture, the neural tube is present here and these neural crest cells, they separate and they separate and now they go inside the mesoderm. And when they go inside the mesoderm, they become ganglionic cells and other cells, right? Ectoderm and mesoderm, okay? You can see from here, they're migrating and they're going all over. Now. Let us see what happens to the Abdullah wants, what happens to Ellen Toys? And the fate of the secondary yolk sac. Secondary yolk sac becomes the vitaline duct. I show you a picture here. Again? Vitaline duct. Yes. Uh, secondary yolk sac. I you can see here. Now you see, this is the this is the endoderm here, this is the mesoderm, this is the ectoderm, okay? Amniotic cavity and this is the chorionic cavity, right? Now see what happens. Now, when the, in the fourth week, folding occurs, you know? The embryo initially is like a plate. Now this plate bends horizontally and vertically. Okay. It bends. Now you can see it is bending. This plate, straight plate is bending, coming down. 
When it comes down, it pushes the yolk cell. See now. So when it pushes the yolk sac, now you can see, mm -hmm. when it is pushing the yolk sac, so now the yolk sac becomes, you know, straight tube like a structure, mm -hmm. instead of big cavity, it is compressed from both sides. Yes, yes. So it's become a tube, a long structure like a tube. Mm -hmm. You can see here. It becomes a long structure like a tube. Okay. And finally, finally, <coughs> now, before going to finally, I come here. This is Alan Toys. Yes. Now, what happens? You can see the yolk sac. The posterior wall of the yolk sac. The yolk sac, you just imagine a balloon. Okay. So this balloon is a yolk sac. Now this balloon has an anterior wall and a posterior wall. Yes. The so posterior wall of the balloon goes so inside fold. the stalk. Folding. Goes inside the stalk. And becomes Ellen Toys. How? How? Simple. So, so you, 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 have, you, you, know, you, you imagine balloon? No, no. So we have the secondary yolk sac here. We have secondary yolk sac. Like, like this is secondary yolk cell, okay? And this is hypoblast. Hypoblast? Yes. And this is yolk cell. Now, this yolk cell has an anterior wall towards you and posterior wall mm -hmm. towards me. Yeah. And it has a wall here and a wall here. So it's like a balloon. Mm -hmm. From the posterior wall, it is, the posterior wall now grows, makes a small tube-like diverticulum inside the stomach. This is called Ellen Toys. It's clear? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's clear? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Now this Ellen Toys, so this Ellen Toys comes from where? Uh, from uh, the posterior wall uh, of the of the yeah. Yeah. Where it go? Inside the yeah. stock. Inside the stock. Uh, connecting connecting the stock. Yes. So you can see in this picture that this is the connecting stock. This is the connecting stock here, yes. extra embryonic mesoderm, and within the connecting stock is going in twice. Yes. You can see yes. from the posterior wall. Posterior wall of the yolk sac, secondary yolk sac. Mm -hmm. It's clear. Mm -hmm. Now, this Ellen toys has no function in humans. But in lower animals, this will become urinary bladder. Yeah. But in humans, this no. will not become nothing. This will obliterate and will degenerate and become a fibrous cord like structure. Now remember, this when folding occurs, when folding occurs, folding occurs, this part of the endoderm, this part of the endoderm will go like this, and this part will go like this. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. All of you? Mm -hmm. So when this part will go like this, and this part of the endoderm finally will make urinary bladder. Yes. In the later on, yes. This okay. part of the endoderm which will fold will make urinary, urinary bladder. bladder. Okay. And now this urinary, urinary bladder is connected with Ellen twice. Yes. So what happens? If this Helen twice does, does now, this stock will become umbilical cord. Okay. The stock will become umbilical cord. Okay. Now, now this Ellen toys is going in umbilical cord, mm -hmm. up to umbilicus. Yes. Okay. And if this part becomes urinary bladder, and this Ellen toys does not degenerate, so what happens? Uh, Ellen toys remain connected to urinary yeah. bladder. So this baby will born with a connection of urinary bladder with umbilicus. Mm -hmm. So urine comes out of no. umbilicus. So remember now. Okay. Remember now, remember what? Stop. That Allen toys Stop. normally degenerate. Normally degenerate. And becomes a cord like structure called uracus. Uracus. But if it does not degenerate and remains patent, uh -huh. remains tube like, uh -huh. then it remains connected with the urinary uh -huh. bladder. And this baby be born with the connection of bladder and umbilicus. Yes. Yes. 
So the, the fate of uh, Alan Toys is the... Normally it degenerates. Degenerates. Uh, the fate of the uh, yolk sac. Now this yolk sac becomes compressed, smaller and smaller. So what happens to it? See here. It becomes smaller and smaller. And it becomes a long tube-like structure. And this tube is called vitelline duct or vitello-intestinal duct. Let's, let me find out the picture for you. See, this is becoming, this is wide here, and this is becoming smaller, okay, compressed, and this will further compressed, further compressed, and then you can see, now you can see, this is not, this is the endoderm. Now, see here, what I want to show you, look at this, this is umbilical cord here. Is umbilical cord, you can see umbilical cord? Yes. Now you can see this metal line deck, this is yolk sac. You see this yolk sac? This yolk sac is becoming smaller and inside the umbilical cord it is called metal line duct. This is here. Normally this metal line duct is also degenerate. But if it persists, it will be a small duct, metal line duct. And this is Ellen Toys. You can see this Ellen Toys? Yes. This is Ellen Toys. This is, and this, is, this part will become bladder. In future, mm -hmm. this is vitiline duct, this is Ellen Toys, both are present in umbilical cord here. This is umbilical cord here. Or a stop. Okay? And then see what? I'm sorry. Sure, sure. Anyone who wants to go can leave, no problem. This is just a revision class. You will put me on YouTube? No. Why would I put it? Where? I saying why? Why should I put it in YouTube? No, no. I mean, where did you? Where you will put it? Ah. On your website? No, no. I will give it them uh, by USB flashes. Okay. So this this is finished. I think I have. If you have book, I we can discuss that on your picture. I think we have few pictures not present here. Let me see if I can find this picture. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Sure. Uh, Go ahead. Let the first start. What's the line between the first start? I will give you an answer. You will never forget. Okay? See here. This is the umbilical cord here. You can see this is the umbilical cord. So, See, this is the this is the chorionic cavity, whole chorionic cavity. When folding occurs, amniotic cavity comes within the chorionic cavity. Okay, so you can see this is the this is the amniotic cavity, but actually this amniotic cavity has come inside the chorionic cavity. So we have amniotic membrane and then we have chorionic membrane outside, and this baby is inside. This umbilicus is attached to you know the placenta. This is placenta. So placenta is attached to mother mm -hmm. and umbilical cord is attached to placenta on one side and other side with the umbilicus of the baby, right? So here is the urinary bladder and within the umbilicus here is present Ellen mm -hmm. twice up to here. And with the line that. And with the line that. So I was looking for this picture. See here. Now you can see this baby, this is umbilical cord, this hole is placenta. Now your question comes. Now you can see this part of placenta has bushy appearance, like villa villa villa. So this is called chorion frondosa. Yes. And this rest is smooth, so chorion levy. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now this again, this is placenta. Now you can see the placenta has now two parts, a maternal part and a fetal part. Yes. The maternal part is decidua. Decidua basalis. Okay, basalis. Mm -hmm. And the fetal part is yeah, what? Chorionic frondosa. Chorionic frondosa. So now you can see, now we, if we see from the top, now we can see from the top, you can see that this is umbilical cord, 
This is amniotic membrane. And I told you, just below the amniotic membrane is the chorionic membrane. Because our, the lower part is chorionic cavity. And when folding takes place, amniotic cavity comes inside the chorionic cavity. So inside amniotic membrane, outside chorionic membrane. Okay? So you can see chorionic membrane, amniotic membrane, and then we have umbilical cord. Now if we see from the above, from the mother side, what we'll see? From the mother side, we'll see that from the decidua of the mother, connective tissue septa come inside. So connective tissue septa come inside. You can see this, yeah. all partitions, I they are connective space. tissue septa. Yeah. They go inside and space between space. two septa Cotyledon. is cotyledon. Cotyledon. So we have cotyledons, right? Yes. yes. So yeah, these are cotyledons, you can see them. Okay. <laughs> Just look at this. Okay, here comes the picture. Now you can see, this is the final umbilical cord. The final umbilical cord, you can see, it has your sac, remnant, which I call vitaline duct, mm -hmm. okay? And it has umbilical vessels. There are, initially there are two umbilical arteries and two umbilical veins. But what happens? The right umbilical vein degenerates. So finally we have two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. vein. Remember. Okay. Two umbilical artery and one umbilical vein. Okay. Now you can see this is a cut section from the um, from the cut section of the umbilical cord. Yes. What what is present inside? This is Wharton's jelly, Mr. Dub. Okay. Then we have some intestinal loops if present, but usually they go back. <laughs> so finally what we have? We have only metaline uh, duct. Metaline duct. We have extra embryonic cavity. Of course, and, and we have blood vessels here. Two artery and one vein. Uh, two artery and one vein. And the? No, Enem twice normally degenerates, but if present, mojo. Yeah, it becomes urecus. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, function of the uh, front duct. Vertiline, yeah. function of the, you see, function of vertiline duct has no function. Vertiline duct is only a remnant. Normally, if it is degenerates, but if it's present, module, because module. Uh, this is my question. The in the early life, they say they help in and, and formation of blood. So the vitaline duct ha has no function. Huh? Vitaline duct has no function. What is the function of vitaline duct? No, there's no function. It's a remnant. It's only remnant. Thank you very much. Can you still come? If you have a question, still you can ask me. Uh, then we start on the right. That is not the function. That is again a remnant. See here. See here. See here. Actually, what you are confused is because you don't know the whole anatomy, that's why you are confused. Yes, yes. I make the body now. Let's say this is a person, nose. Okay? This person has this cavity, midline. There is the umbilicus module. Okay? Mm -hmm. Below the umbilicus, here, in the midline, in the midline, we have three structures. In male, we have two structures urinary bladder. Mm -hmm. Okay, like this. And we have rectum, like this. Okay? Now, this is umbilicus here. So what happens? Normally, I told you, the part from where the bladder develops, develops what? Develops the elentois. Mm -hmm. I told you, yes, yes. elentois. So elentois, I told you, that it goes into the connecting stock. So it means, here was the connecting stock. So it comes up to the Umbilicus. Come up to the umbilicus. umbilicus. Okay. Normally, this will degenerate and becomes fibrous. Yes. Yeah. And it yeah. becomes when fibrous. We call, it, we call it urecus. What we call it? Urecus. Yes, urecus. Okay. Thank you. Ellen becomes urecus. But what happens now? Okay. When the body develops. Inside we have here stomach. 
Okay? Inside we have here intestines, all intestines. And yes. we have peritoneum. Peritoneum can we have? Peritoneum. Now this peritoneum comes to the umbilicus and from umbilicus it go on to the uracus. Uh -huh. And from uracus go on to the bladder. And from bladder comes on the back and then go on to the rectum. Okay. Now this part of the peritoneum, which is on the uracus here, is called median umbilical ligament. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is a new thing. This is median umbilical because we don't tell you because you didn't study now anything. That's why we didn't tell you. But remember, median umbilical ligament is ligament of peritoneum. Peritoneum, yes. And it is present over uracus. The uracus. Over the uracus. So all of but these. But what happens with the allen twice? If somebody asks you what happens with the allen twice, it becomes. Uracus, yes. not medium like a ligament. Yes, because medium like a ligament is peritoneum. Peritoneum. It's clear. And baracus with peritoneum. Uracus with peritoneum. It's clear. Yeah. yeah. Any question? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Connecting stuff. Connecting stuff, yes. What? In the first week. In the first week, the connecting stuff is extramuronic mesoderm. It remains as such in the first week, in the second week. And finally, when placenta develops, it becomes a black alcohol, simple. And the mesodermal cells which are inside, some of them become blood vessels, and some of them become water jelly. So what are the compartments of the system? Oh, you need to study them, you know. One, is, one, one part has this line duct and chorionic cavity, one part has blood vessels and water jelly, there are two main compartments. You can study them, okay?